Kevin Marks of BT, also known as British Telecom. How are you today? I'm doing very well, enjoying the web. Now, relevance when curating the real-time stream, specifically Twitter, how important is relevance to you? Well, what relevance means is different to everyone. That's, that's why Twitter works. Twitter works because it puts a face next to each piece of information, which means we can use the trust networks in our brains that rely on faces to decide what's important and what isn't. Because we recognize the face, we can decide how to weight that information much more intelligently than any machine can. That, so, that's the real power of Twitter, and it's why the new retweet confuses people so much. They see an alien face next to something, and they're going, what? who is this person? What are they doing in my, in my space? Now, well, friends, and you know, so it matters from whom it comes. How about timing? Like, uh, how recently the information is uh, has come in? Is that part of relevance to you? It can be part of it. It depends what the information is. I think part of this is um, we have this flow of stuff coming past that we dip into and out of. If something's important, it'll bounce around in the flow, ripple away, and come back, and you'll pick it up later anyway. It doesn't have to be exactly now. That was the thing, one of the things we learned at Technorati was that the last five things someone said is not the most important thing they said, um, but the things that other people repeat becomes important. So we're starting to see that happen with, um, with retweets, with, with, just with straight repetition, with ideas being quoted and, and repeated. The other thing that people do with Twitter is they point out, they point back to something else that may be something that they said before, maybe something someone else said. So even though the messages are short, you can give a longer context, you can give some history, you can point out to Marcus Aurelius and go back to the, the past if, if that's relevant to what you're talking about. He's a very close friend of mine. He's, well, he's, he used to be until he died. He's, he's quite a blogger. <laughs> old content, very old, very old, very old school. So, what percentage of the tweets you read on a daily basis are relevant to you? Good question. Uh, hard to tell, actually. I read a lot of them, and a lot of them I do. The thing is, all of us read some and respond or pass on some of them. So each of us is, is re-filtering the world for each other. So between us, we're sort of sifting it into something useful. So I see a bunch of stuff go by and be half looking at it, and something will pop up that will engage me, I'll respond to that, and that will start a discussion. Um, and that will bounce around and come back, and then someone else will mention it, and it'll, it goes around. So because each of us is filtering the world for each other, between us we're extracting meaning quite quickly and usefully from the web. So it becomes a, a collective action. So and that's a very human thing, but what about technology? Because technology has advanced so far. What if there were some technology that could get stuffed in there as well? So in addition to the relevance of the brains of the people, the technology was helping you better find what's relevant to you. There are some tools that do bits of that, but a lot of what we've seen is that actually human media actually works better. Um, following people as individuals means that you're not just getting a keyword, you're not just getting something you're searching for, you're getting an, their attention filter, filtering on the word. Following 50 people, you've suddenly got this um, stream of stuff that's coming by. The other thing is that um, a lot of Twitter is phatic, it's, it's just social grooming communication. So it may not be relevant, but it's interesting because you now know something about that person. And that creates a sense of trust and understanding of the other person, which means later on if that person asks a question, you're, you're more inclined to respond. It's like, oh, well. Kathy's been talking about all this stuff. I respond to that the question she's asking about where to stay in Paris or whatever. I like when you respond to me. It makes me feel good. That's, that's the other part. It, it becomes part of a social interaction. So we're actually able to project ourselves into this this world in a way. So there's a, of course, you know, nobody cares what a random stranger had for lunch. But if a friend of yours says, I'm just sitting in a cafe in Paris and you're in Paris, that's really important and interesting. Um, and even if you're not in Paris, it still, it still could be you to oh... They're over there with oh, the gang. That's what's going on. And when I say digital intuition, what does that mean to you? Digital intuition. I'm not sure that means anything to me at the moment, but I have to think about that one. I think the, it sounds like a contradiction in terms. I think intuition is analog. Intuition is the stuff that happens in our brains. Um, I'm very suspicious of machine systems that purport to do this. What if, I, lots of them what if I told you that there might be something that could change your mind on that? I'd, I'd be I'd interested to see it, but I've seen a lot of them over the years. I see these sort of sentiment analysis things that really lose all nuance. Um, I, I see, you know, what, 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 I, what I think is that a lot of what we can do is build tools to help people find other people that they'll find interesting. That's important. That's, that's useful. Excellent. But, well, thank you. Kevin Marks, it's lunchtime. Sounds good to me. <laughs>